few, but I'm very cautious. I've had my bag stolen in Liverpool. I come from the old regime and you weren't allowed to do what they're allowed to do these days. When he went out at night, you had to be in by a certain time. And if you were, it wasn't in at that certain time, your father was out looking for you. I, I feel safe in Liverpool at 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. They, they, they terrorise communities, don't they? They get away with it because people are afraid to uh, shop them. There's a lot of people like that in their Tonkas. You see them driving in their blacked out Tonkas, you know. I mean, come on. The best solution would probably be zero tolerance, to use an American expression. When we were kids, we had loads to do. I just didn't get into it. I've got a 14 year old son. Um, Fortunately, doesn't really play out, so totally out of control, yeah, it's frightening. You'd probably just have more police officers on the street. You know, people are frightened to, to go out. I don't think ecstasy should be class A drug. It's just a, you know, it doesn't do any harm really. I think you should treat drugs um, proportionate to their use. So I don't think you should just uh, look at whether it's class A, class B, look at the uses, look at who's using it, looking at where they're getting it from. I think that's a much better way of, of, of approaching it. So I think that the government really used them as like a social thing, you know, with the credit crunch and that, what's going on at the minute. I reckon like they don't mind so much about the coke because it encourages people to like spend money and stuff when they're out and it's like a social thing. So it's good for the government, but like they only does what benefits them, don't they? So. It shouldn't really be worried about cannabis because it's not that bad, like it doesn't really affect you that much. But heroin is more to be worried about.